Is AI search taking over Amazon? Or is their search assistant Rufus just the latest fad that every e-commerce guru wants to hype up so that they have a new course and service to sell you? If you want to survive as an Amazon seller or anyone in e-commerce, then you have to understand how search is changing. But the question today is, is Rufus changing everything? Or is Amazon SEO and listing optimization just business as usual? I've spent years identifying find fact from fiction so that I can empower and help Amazon businesses become best sellers. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at where Amazon's Rufus is now and where it's going in the future so that you're empowered with the information that you need to know to make sure that you're not left behind. As I was preparing for this video, I made some really interesting and frankly, pretty shocking discoveries that I think might surprise you. But before we get into those, I think it's important to just start with what Rufus is and how it's showing up on Amazon because it is present throughout the whole Amazon shopping experience in a few different places. So what is Rufus? It is a traditional AI chatbot. However, it also makes an appearance sometimes in the search results page along with on the actual product pages by way of questions. And it also shows up on every individual product page by way of an assistant that can help you primarily distill and parse apart key information from the reviews. This seems to be really where a lot of Rufus's attention is focused with a lot of the pre-filled prompts on the product pages relating to customer experience, which isn't surprising given that we know that people shopping for products put a lot of weight into how previous customers feel, which is why reviews for so long have been so critical. So this is another way that reviews views are influencing your performance, not just in those how many of the five stars that your product can garner, but now also in the types of feedback customers leave and then how that is inspiring Rufus to, to pre-create those questions and prompts for customers that are wanting to explore whether your product might be a good fit for them. So Rufus appears in a few different parts also of the customer journey. It can operate as a sales assistant and helping a customer decide and evaluate between a variety of different options. It can help with product discovery, even giving inspiration and ideas. For example, when I go onto Amazon right now and I open just the home page and I open Rufus, I get prompts like explore something new. What do I need to compost leaves? What gear do I need to work out at home? How do I do an at-home manicure? I can also get recommendations for best countertop ice makers, best headphones for kids, and best cell phone holders for the car. I feel like Rufus doesn't know me that well. I live in Las Vegas, so I really don't have leaves. I also don't have children, so headphones for children is something that is not particularly relevant to me, but okay. Uh, we know that it is. It, it even tells us it's in beta, so we shouldn't have high hopes for it, but just something to keep in mind. So in the chat functionality, it also has abandoned cart recovery, which is pretty interesting. So if you are opening up a chat after previously not buying a product, it might ask you whether you're still interested in it. So in this case, keep shopping for fishing hats, which I wasn't shopping for fishing hats in preparation for this video, but I was shopping for hats. So Rufus is, is still slightly an enigma to me. That's some of what the chat functionality is doing right off the bat when you open it up. But then if you go a little bit deeper to actually use it to search for a product or to try to evaluate what product might be good for you, then it can help to highlight key details that customers customers might want to consider and evaluate products to determine if it's a good fit for their needs. It does this by presenting a variety of product recommendations and then short summaries for each of those products. Very similar to if you're using any other AI search assistant where it 
is giving an AI generated quick overview of the item. Another important point to consider before we go into something that totally shocked me about Amazon Rufus is the question of whether people are even using it in the first place. And Ecomtent recently came out with a blog that answered this very question. According to their research, Rufus's current infrastructure was built to process 3 million tokens per minute. Rufus handled approximately 100 90,476 queries per minute over a 24-hour period. This translates to a capacity of 274.3 million queries per day. Amazon receives approximately 2 billion searches per day. Thus, Rufus accounts for roughly 13.7% of those, and this was back in October of 2024, so we're already nearly six months out from this. That percentage is clearly growing rapidly, and Ecomtent is projecting that it could reach 25 to 35% of all searches by the end of 2025. So while it's not a massive percentage of current queries, it is still significant and could be, if, if their numbers are correct, as much as a quarter to a over a third of all queries that are originating on Amazon. So this isn't something to sleep on. And simultaneously with that, I think it's really important that we now take a journey through what the experience is like as a customer if they are using this AI search assistant to try to surface a product that is going to be a highly customized recommendation for their needs. So in this demo that we're going to do, um, I would like to compare how the query surfaces recommendations through Rufus versus just a traditional search results page. Because ultimately, Rufus should give me more tailored, better recommendations that are highly suited to what I'm looking for and make it easier than navigating the search results page. Otherwise, I don't personally see any reason why I would opt to use this over just my habit of going to the regular Amazon search bar. So where is Rufus stacking up right now? Now, one of the things that just as an aside that I find a little bit strange and frankly frustrating is that you cannot actually expand the Rufus chat. So it's just a small chat, which is okay if you're just simply asking questions. But when you start to get into product recommendations and you're given a lot of information, it's it's quite a bit to condense down into just a small chat. So I, I'm not really sure what the reasoning and logic is for that, but I don't think that it's great for customer experience. Amazon, if you're watching, you might want to take note of that. I also have some other recommendations for you that you could find interesting. So I'm searching ultra wide sun hat on Rufus and I'm preparing to go on vacation. So it's giving me a number of different items that seem to be varying price points. They all have fairly high reviews and they're more or less of a similar style. So how does this stack up when I compare it to just a regular search? So I almost feel like my regular search results page knows me better than Rufus does because my top organic placements are all for more feminine type sun hats. And interestingly, the first recommendation that Amazon makes for me is pretty far down the page. Now, it does have a little badge that says number one top rated, but it takes quite a while to scroll there before I get it. And yet, Rufus is giving this product to me as the number one recommendation. So this is what really shocked me. When I was doing additional research and preparation for this video before filming, I went to ChatGPT and Perplexity and Google to see how their recommendations compared to Rufus and just evaluate what the experience was like, which we will get into some contrast to show you where Rufus is and how it stacks up. But in that process, I made a discovery that the number one recommendation that Rufus is giving me is actually the number one search result 
on Google in the form of a wire cutter recommendation. If you're not familiar, wire cutter is a New York Times content property where they review and evaluate the best of all kinds of product categories. I'm sure they have very good SEO, but this is what's so fascinating to me is that it seems possible that Amazon's Rufus is actually factoring in data beyond Amazon's marketplace in order to evaluate and recommend an item that just happens to be the top recommendation across all of these other tools and is also the number one spot in Google, which up until now, what happens outside, it doesn't necessarily have a direct correlation to what's happening on Amazon's marketplace. And if this is the case, then it means that ranking number one for a given search term on Amazon does not necessarily guarantee that you are going to be the top recommended option in that same query if a customer is using Rufus. And all of this is to say that if this is the case, then this is just one more reinforcing point of how critical it is that you have a diversified strategy that isn't solely focused on Amazon and that you're thinking about how you can make sure to really enhance your visibility, your SEO, and your brand awareness across the internet so that you can increase your likelihood of being recommended by Rufus when a customer is initiating a query through their search assistant. I find this so, so, so very interesting. A lot of the other recommendations that Rufus is providing me, like this Adidas hat and the Sun Briolet hat, they are not even on page one at all of the search results that I get if I just run a traditional search. Now, those particular products aren't surfacing on all of the other AI search assistants. So I'm really not certain or clear on what is influencing the the presentation of those particular items in this query, but it is interesting. Then it doesn't really get any better because when I ask more specific questions, it doesn't do well with giving me the most stylish and widest, which I can very easily evaluate all of those things from a quick, simple skim of a search results page. And so the other thing, because this is small, I can't easily look at all of these items side by side. I'm just forced to kind of scroll through and then I guess make a mental note in my mind of what's most interesting. But because so many brands on Amazon have weird names, I'm not necessarily going to be able to do that that easily. So it becomes confusing. Whereas I can just go to the search results page, do a quick skim, identify the ones I like and call it a day. I can identify which one's wider, which one's most stylish, which ones seem to be most in line with the style and requirements that I have, and then I can just click in and evaluate them that way. So, so far, Rufus isn't doing a very awesome job, and then truthfully, things just get worse because then it gives me all of of these prefabricated questions that I imagine are supposed to help me better find and evaluate a hat that is going to exactly meet my needs. Except then it asks me all these weird questions like, do wide brim hats accommodate sunglasses or headphones? I suppose that's okay. But this one really threw me for a tailspin. Like I truly have no clue why this would be one of the options there. It says, which hat styles are most flattering for different face shapes? I couldn't not click on this. And when I did, I was given a very silly response in which it gave me recommendations for different kinds of hats, not sun hats, just a menagerie of all hats for all the different face shapes. And then I find myself asking, well, what kind of face shape am I? And then I think, well, I might as well phone a friend and figure out if they have a sense, or maybe I need to download a TikTok filter to help me figure out my face shape. And 
before I know it, I am the last thing on my mind is buying a sun hat. And now I'm in a tailspin trying to figure out what kind of head shape I have and if whether a hat even looks good on me or not. So if the goal of Rufus is to help make a sale quicker and to help better match a customer with an item that is going to meet their needs, this is doing the opposite. This is creating uncertainty. This is creating friction. And this is creating creating a distraction, all of which are going to send me further and further and further away from buying a hat. And maybe it's even going to make me want to go to a store in person where I can try hats on and evaluate whether they suit my face shape or not. So at this stage, and I'm not saying that it's something that you don't need to pay attention to, but at this stage where Rufus stands today, from my experience, the main Amazon search is better. It's easier to compare and contrast options at a glance. It gives a wider array of types of options, and it isn't giving me weird questions that confuse me or distract me or make me question who I am as a person. So now that we've looked at what it's like to use Rufus as an AI search assistant and we're thinking about how this might apply to your business, it's worth also comparing it to a few other AI search tools to see how it stacks up, what Rufus may be evolving to, because we know that Amazon is investing a lot into developing this out. So it's not going to stay as it is. And because we see that some other tools are already doing a better job, I have a sense that this is really still very much the early days. So let's look at what ChatGPT gives us. As I alluded to, that Sunday afternoon's ultra adventure hat which is not really very wide and truly is probably the least interesting to me of all of the options provided is also their number one, likely because of that wire cutter article and probably a lot of other work that they have done uh, to get that exposure, build that credibility, that SEO, and that breadth of presence online. So ChatGPD is fine. Perplexity, no secret here, is absolutely my current favorite AI shopping assistant. And one of the reasons for that is because of the way that it displays the information. So when you hear me complaining about the fact that Amazon is just giving me this tiny little chat window, perplexity not only gives me the information widescreen, but it presents it through a variety of different ways so that no matter how you like to digest information, you are given in it in a way that's going to be suitable to you. So I really love that they give the pictures, but then they also provide me with this chart so I can easily compare them to each other and evaluate what might be most important. And then from there, it gives me some additional questions. I chose which one offers the best UV protection because that seemed interesting to me. And then it gave me some additional information on that, but it also gives me the option to say which ultra wide brim sun hats are the most stylish or have a built-in headband. So a lot of these pre-created questions are more in line with top of mind questions or points that maybe a customer hadn't even considered but realizes is important and now they can quickly pinpoint that product with the assistance of the AI. So unfortunately at the moment, Rufus comes in last, but it also has that built-in integration with Amazon, so there is something to be said for that. And I have a feeling that even though it has its flaws, it's not going to stay at the bottom rung for long, so you definitely don't want to dismiss it. AI changes so quickly, and it's unquestionably also influencing the ways that customers discover, search, evaluate, and buy products, so you cannot ignore it. You don't want to brush this off. Rufus isn't just a fad, and while its adoption and performance may be underwhelming right now, we know that Amazon is working really hard on developing this because their future depends on it. So that's why I'm creating a part two for this video where we are going to be diving into how Rufus is shaping the future of Amazon SEO and listing optimization and what you need to do now in order to be able to position yourself 
for success today and in the future. I'm not sure whether that video is live yet. It all depends on when you're watching this video, but if it is, then I will be sure to link it right in this box right here. If not, then I'm putting another video recommendation there, which you absolutely want to watch. It explains the future of SEO and it's not what you think. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and click over into that video and I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.